Boy, that sure, that sure is a good looking boat when it's in the water. I swear it is. But today I've got a kind of a request from one of my subscribers. Um, and it's something I've been meaning to do. I just really haven't had the time. But I have a leak somewhere in this boat. And I need to track it down. I need to trace it down. And uh, the best way to do it is you just kind of put your boat in a, in a pool or a bathtub full of water. And you leave it in there for... 10 minutes or so or, or longer depending on how fast your leak is you, if you have a leak in your boat you need to check all your through holes you need to check like your nipples your exit nipples you need to check your hardware where it, like bolts into the hole on the transom any type of like these hoses pro boat just kind of runs the hose through the hole which is fine it's above the water line so you're not going to take on water if the boat's sitting stationary if it's taking on quite a bit of water it's not good for your electronics, one, uh, your you know servo, your ESC. It's not good for your batteries, two, and it's not good for your bearings. So if you have a leaky boat, if you're going out and, and you've only run the boat, maybe a pack, and you've got more than a handful of water in your boat, then you have a leak somewhere. So check your nipples, check your through holes, check your hardware back here, uh, just kind of keep an eye on it when you put it in the water you know put a little pressure make sure that the places that are in question are below the water line and just kind of check to see if there's any water coming in uh, mine looks pretty good mine, my, my hardware looks pretty good um, so the so next place you need to look is your stuffing oh, is your stuffing tube I found the culprit it looks like the stuffing tube is a uh, not sealed properly now that could be my my fault because a bit of uh, modifications to my strut, like bending it, trying to get it perfect. Uh, so that could be my fault, but that's definitely our culprit right there. You guys see the water that's coming through the the hole. It's filling up the boat. So uh, so I found my leak, uh, the stuffing tube where it goes through the hole. Just looks like the the epoxy broke loose. It's not good for your connectors, your banana clips, your EC5s, EC3s, uh, whatever kind of connectors you guys use for your battery. It's not good for your balance leads. Uh, it corrodes the balance leads, uh, you know, making it a little tough for you to balance, charge your batteries at times. Um, I mean, I could keep going. <laughs> a dry boat is a happy boat. <laughs> yeah. Had the boat sitting all night, it should be bone dry for us. I was wanting to change the stuffing tube out. I've actually bought some brass tubing and none of these tubes are fitting my liner perfect. They're all one's a little too they're all a little too big, a little too small. I mean I've got just about every size under the moon. We're going to try to salvage the stuffing tube. Basically, just going to get the old epoxy off the stuffing tube and put new epoxy in to waterproof the boat. So, undo the collet here. Get the drive shaft out. The flex cable. All right. And then uh, we got to take the strut off. And I'll probably pull the motor as well. I need to actually fashion this ESC down because it came off my last run. The last time we had the boat out with this Turner G setup, we were running Ovonic 8000s in the boat. I think we got like 58 miles an hour, okay? But the, the boat was real squirrely, and uh, it wouldn't really blow over so much, but it was just acting funny because of all the weight in the boat. I got some new ones. We're going to do a test in the next Tinker Test and Tune video. We're going to GPS the speed with the 8000s. We're going to GPS the speed with the 2200 success. See what the boat does, light versus heavy. So that's going to be in our next Tinker Test and Tune video. So we got the, we got the shaft out. Let's get back to this to the build we're doing now. I got a little excited. I can't wait to get it out in the water. And it's gonna be water waterproof. There's not gonna be water in the boat now. Bonus. 
let's get the strut off and we'll uh we'll try to pull this stuff and tube out hopefully we can get it out without uh without messing it up hopefully like i said i couldn't find the right size tube i think pro boat used an odd size <laughs> so you have to basically either use their shaft or change the whole draft system out and i'm i'm not quite ready to change the draft system out oh i should have marked that strut shoot I'm not quite ready to change the drive system out because I'm actually testing out this strut mod that I did. Um, it's actually keeping grease in the boat pretty pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to take change out my drive system and strut and everything right now. I'm in the process of testing some uh, some modifications out that I did. All right, so we've got that out. Let's get the motor pulled out so we can pull. I think we're gonna have to pull the shaft out this way because it's gonna have epoxy in there that I actually broke loose, like messing around with the stuffing tube, tr trying to get it bent where I want it, not where Probo had it. So might have a hard time getting it out of there. Hopefully not, hopefully not. So, all right, we got that broken loose. Let's get these screws out the way. All right, let's see if we can shove that in there. Yeah. All right, now we're going to have to take this retainer, the stuffing tube retainer off right here. The stuffing tube should be free, and we should be able to, like, manipulate it out of the boat. I know that the epoxy's broken loose because it's leaking, so. Yeah, you see how loose it is with that? Nothing's holding it in place. So let's see if we can get it out without messing anything up. All right, so I got a soft hammer here. I'm going to try to tap on this while I'm, like, pulling. You got me this for Father's Day. Thank you, son. East wing. Huh? How nice was that? All right, let's tap this thing out. Don't want to mess it up. I'm going to try to reuse it. still be good might have to cut just a little bit off the end here where I messed it up yeah it's definitely epoxy it's like a rubbery type feels soft hmm. so I'm gonna clean up the end of it where I kind of hit it with the hammer I got a little bad spot on the end not too bad. The stuffing tube actually looks pretty good. I'm not even believing that out of all these brass, copper, aluminum tubes I have, none of them work. None of them. This is uh, basically a six millimeter stuffing tube, 1564, which is 5.95 millimeters. Uh, I got, I'm all the way around it. I got quarter inch and 730 seconds. I don't have this specific size I thought it was quarter inch to be honest with you I thought it was quarter inch yep so that's 730 seconds right there quarter inch it's got some room in it so I'm gonna give it a little bend I'm gonna kind of get it bent to shape where I want it since I have it out I'm gonna try to bend it perfect get a nice gradual bend and uh, we'll put it back in the boat when I got this boat from Pro Boat they had like an angle on it like this it was like negative angle I basically ride like that I gradually tried to get it lined up with my ride pads that's where that little kink come from able to run it in line before it was like this and, uh, it's actually best to have just a little down angle so it pushes the water better. Aluminum is very soft, very soft and pliable, so you have to be super careful with it. Sandpaper in there and, and sand it out so we have a good surface. I got 80 grit emery cloth here that I just taped onto one of my pick tools. Alright, I'm just gonna put it in that in this cavity here where the stuffing tube goes through. 
Are you kidding me? Oh, that's a whack, son. So if you're changing out your stuffing tube and your Blackjack 24, the odds are it's going to be super, super thin right here. Like, just like mine. I could probably just epoxy in there, which I may just do that. This stuff works good, though. It's, this stuff works really good with plastic. Really grinds my gears right there, how thin, how thin they made that. It's paper thin, you guys. You know what? Let's use the water weld. Let's use it. That's why I got it, for stuff like this. And it dries pretty quick. It'll actually dry underwater. Basically, behind this lip right here. Like, right there. That's it. I don't want it all down here. I just want to kind of build it up right here. And uh, make it solid. So when I put my epoxy in, in this... It won't leak out. dries hard so uh, I'm gonna wait for that to cure out for about 20 or 30 minutes or so and uh, in the meantime we're gonna run our new water cooling I've got this uh, silicone tubing that we're gonna run to the ESC I'm gonna mount the ESC up front up here just double side tape it down go ahead and wipe it down with some alcohol Alcohol is good on a boat. You ain't got to worry about it messing up the boat, messing the paint up or anything. I'm just going to wipe it down, get all the oil and grease off up here. If we can't get over 60 with this ESC, I got another one to put on it. We're going to pull the silicone tube out. Pretty sure this is the stock tube. Wasn't long enough to run to the ESC up forward so I'll pull that out I'm just gonna instead of drilling it bigger I'm gonna use a file and just file it out I don't have a through hole fitting so I'm gonna, I just want it to fit tight so we don't leak if the boat's still leaking after we put the stuffing tube in then uh, I'm gonna check the hardware pull the hardware check this boot right here a lot of times these boots will leak uh, that's our that's our next step if it's still leaking after we get the stuffing tube installed all right see it just took a couple little swipes with the with the file and got it got it filed down to size so we can pull this larger cooling tube in so you guys know me by now I'm gonna cut this tube a little large longer than what I need and I'll just let the access stay in there you you know I like to move my electronics around I like to try different setups different weight distributions um, so I'm, I'm not gonna cut my tube like perfect to a T fit because I like to move things around and you don't want to take off too much when you're doing stuff like this uh, you're not using like a, a, a fitting you could take off too much real quick with a drill if you're not careful. So I like to do it by hand, like so I can feel how much material is being taken off. Yeah, there we go. Nice tight fit. Great googly moogly. Perfect. This pickup goes down in the water, this external pickup. So you really, you kind of want it as small as you possibly can. Let's see if this fits on there. Yeah, so might leave it like it is. Uh, later on, I might, I might drill it out a little bit bigger and make a, put a bigger brass tube on there for more flow. You know, we like our flow. Uh, 3M works the best. 
pretty much impermeable to water water and you don't have to worry about it coming off big esc double-sided tape down on my 42 and my my 35 delta force and i've had no issues with uh, the escs coming unstuck as long as you prep the surface before you do it it's going to stay where you want it that thing's going nowhere where are you going nowhere let's go ahead and get this motor mounted back up in its rightful position i went ahead and installed the motor because once we run our stuffing tube i want to put my cable in the stuffing tube so that we'll connect and get a perfect alignment to the motor even though we have this stuffing tube retainer here I like to put my cable in while it's curing out. Let's check out our water weld, see how that's doing. Solid as a rock. Yeah. That stuff works good. It dries fast, like on the go fix. Man, that stuff's awesome. We already bent it and got it lined up with the with the ride pads, I've got it bent the way I want it. This is your last shot at uh, getting this stuff right before you epoxy it into the boat. So double check, triple check, quadruple check your work. Make sure everything's right. Make sure your bends are right. Make sure you got it where you want it before you start mixing the epoxy. Um, rough it up with some sandpaper, whether it's aluminum with powder coat or brass. Rough it up with sandpaper so you have something for your epoxy to stick to. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put my retainer on. I'm not going to put it all the way on. Probably just put one screw on. On my boat, the holes wallowed out because it broke. So that retainer is going to help keep it in place while we're epoxying. I'm not going to pour it all in there. It's a lot. It's still way too much. Whoa. Point the boat down. Let gravity do its job. Move it around in there. See what I'm doing? Until you start to see. See it come out the bottom here. Let's see. Yeah, so you see that? I'm starting to see a little bit already. I like to use 24 hour epoxy for stuff like this because it has time to set in every crevice. I've got my stuffing tube in the in its retainer, okay? I'm gonna put my strut on my shaft, alright? Basically, want it, I'm gonna put it where I, where I think I'm gonna run it the most, in its permanent position. When you lock this strut down, it's basically vertical on the transom of your boat. You make your stuffing tube dead nuts in line with the with the boat. You want to make sure the bend's in the right place. You don't want the bend like uh, veering like veering off to the side or anything. You want to make sure it's a up and down bend. So I got it lined up perfect. Got the strut on, that's gonna keep it kinda in position for us. Got it mounted up into our stuffing tube retainer that's gonna help keep it lined up as well. We'll let it sit and check it tomorrow. All right, it's been sitting all night. It's good and hard now, good and cured out. So we're gonna take it out and uh, put it in the water just to see if it's leaking. I've got to shorten up my, my drive shaft my flex shaft a little bit because I had to shorten up the stuffing tube which is actually I kind of wanted that that way I can get a little bit more down angle with it being long it wasn't wanting to sit right and it was binding up so let's uh I got a little 3s battery let's see what it sounds like that sounds good I hadn't even greased it that sounds nice so I'm going to shorten up my shaft and uh, let's go take it outside. Let's take it outside real quick. If we have any water 
coming in the boat anywhere, anywhere. This thing's bone dry, so we should see any type of water accumulation in the boat, like period, anywhere. Let's see. So nothing's coming in the stuffing tube. That's what That was our mission, was to fix the first leak. Now we're seeing if we have any other leaks. Like I told you before, check your hardware, check where your cooling tubes are running through the boat. Whoa, <laughs> just turned on for no reason. That's funny. I almost dropped my camera in the water. I don't see any water anywhere, you guys. So I think we accomplished what we set out to accomplish. Yeah, so our next video with this boat, we'll uh, put the dual 2200 3S packs in it and see what she'll do on 6S Lite. I appreciate you guys watching. I know it was a long video. I had a lot of information, a lot of a lot of stuff to cover. And uh, sometimes, you, you know, you just got to make a long video, I guess. No ways around it sometimes, but no leaks, no leaks. I'm going to let you guys go. Like I said, it's a long video. Thank you guys for watching. Big B here with Ironclad RC, a channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. We'll see you guys next time.